Transcontinental Limited, symbol TCLA dot TCL dot A on the TSX. They have two classes here, but the A class is the primary class. It is a leader in flexible packaging in the United States, Canada, and Latin America, as well as Canada's largest printer for items like books, magazines, and newspapers, amongst other items. Revenue is roughly split 50-50 between the two groups at this time. The stock is currently trading at about $11 a share with a market cap of $950 million Canadian. The shares, however, are down 28% year-to-date, and as well, it pays a dividend yield of 8.2%. So, looking at the last quarter, revenues came in at $707 million, which is down 5.5% year over year. Adjusted operating earnings before depreciation and amortization came in at $108 million, down 4.5%. Similarly, adjusted net earnings fell 10.5% to $0.51 cents per share. So, a top to bottom decrease as revenue came down, so did the bottom line. Management attributes the drops to customers destocking for packaging. So as we saw for many industries, uh, when the supply chain was really limited during the pandemic, they all bought up, bought up, bought up, and now they have an overflow of stock. And now you have those companies needing to go work through that stock before they buy more. As well, Transcontinental is seeing a weaker economic backdrop, lowering volumes for both their packaging and printing uh, segments. With cost-saving measures in the printing division, they partially offset the decrease. But if we step back looking at a 10-year graph of their revenue, growth has just not been the company's strong suit. The company has had relatively flat earnings, barring the jump in 2018, which was attributed to a big acquisition of Coveris Americas, which added flexible packaging to the company, but has failed to see growth since. And with the drop during the pandemic, we're now seeing year-over-year declines after that. The printing industry is obviously a mature industry, so a decline in overall is not exactly a surprise to see no organic growth or recently, in their case, a decline. Now, shifting to the balance sheet, the company has a net debt and lease position of $1.1 billion, with a trailing adjusted EBITDA of $442 million. Roughly, the leverage is 2.5 times. Of the company's $1 billion in long-term debt, $464 million is at a variable rate or $310 million after you account for their swaps. So as the variable, as interest rates have rose, their variable debt has put downward pressure on the company's bottom lines as interest rates have rose. That being said, Transcontinental have continued to have a positive operating cash flows, which is always a good thing to see. That strong earnings quality when you're seeing it actually come through on cash. Over the past nine months, the company has generated $226 million in cash from operations, However, once you consider the CapEx and the mergers and acquisitions from its shifts into more packaging and payments of interest on debt and then uh, their dividend as well, there's no additional cash left over. So they're not building the cash balance sheet. They're, whatever they take in, they're putting out as well. Dividend has not actually grown as well. They stopped growing their dividend in 2020. They're quite consistently growing it for over a decade prior to that. And now it's just sitting at 23 cents a quarter. So it's no longer being that dividend growth story. It's just a flat dividend. So moving to valuation, the company has a trailing adjusted earnings per share of uh, $1.99, resulting in a trailing PE of roughly 5.6 times. However, looking forward, given the weakness uh, which management is expecting, Q4, which is normally a stronger quarter, uh, the earnings for 2023 will likely be lower, resulting in ultimately a higher valuation, probably in the 6 to 7 range compared to the 5.6, which we're seeing on a trailing basis. So our take, the company is unlikely to have really any sustained growth given in its industry at this time, as well as the near-term weakness due to macroeconomic uh, environment. It is just putting additional pressure on the company's operations. Transcontinental is impacted due to higher interest rates really in two ways, the increase in interest expense for its very low debt, as well as if interest rates stay high and until it needs to refinance, then they would uh, their fixed securities, then they obviously need to pay a higher interest rate. As well, the companies do see uh, downward pressure in its share price as investors have moved from these mature, high interest paying or high dividend paying companies to just interest bearing uh, securities. So you go from your 8% uh, transcontinental to a, let's say, 5% bond, you're taking off a bit of risk, but it's much more secure when you're lending to the government versus having an equity position in a company and in a mature industry. 
So overall, the company is likely nearest fair term value given the lack of growth in the current macro backdrop, as well as it meaning long term, uh, it needs to keep doing those M&As to uh, even retain its growth or retain its revenue line right now. And over time, it may trickle into some sort of growth, but we're not really seeing that at this time. So really just a fair value stock, I see it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's transcontinental. That's another company we're very familiar with. And it's it's traded at a depressed valuation for several years going back, which, you know, as you said, the a significant portion of its business is in decline. So there are some companies out there where they they have, you know, half of the business in decline, half the business is more of a growth area long term and they're transitioning over slowly. I, I think that, you know, over time that has the likelihood of working, but this isn't a, this is what I would call probably a deep value play right now. So it's, it's not something that you can expect to work out in the next six to even 12 months. Yeah. I'd say five plus years for them with yeah. how long the transition is going to take. Five plus years. And then even on the packaging side, um, you know, packaging businesses are also under pressure right now just because so mm-hmm. much customer inventory was built up last year. So that's, that's impacting sales and, and margins. Yeah, we've looked at a few smaller packaging companies this year, and um, you know the the most recent quarters have typically showed declines, and you know, and then they're actually forecasting lower demand in the near term. So <clears throat> you're hit by a couple things there. 